Hey guys, Mark here with Hockey Culture Training and Systems. Today I want to talk about the history of the curve on a hockey stick. The who, what, why, where, and how. See, in the modern game, most hockey players use some sort of curve on their sticks. Uh, blade. This is typically used to increase velocity in shots, create more accurate passing, and to improve the ability to stick handle. Now, today there are dozens of different curves a player can actually choose from. One is not truly superior than the other. The best curve is typically up to personal choice and preference. Some guys like an extreme banana curve, others like it a bit more flat, like myself. And there is plenty of selection in between. But this wide range of selection wasn't always the case. In fact, for most of the history of hockey, there were no curved sticks at all. If someone saw a bend in your sticks blade, it was considered faulty equipment. Now that was until the 1960s where two NHL legends would come across the accident of a lifetime, right up there with the invention of pink lemonade and pacemakers. I believe it was 1965 to be more precise, where Hall of Famer Stan Mikita and Bobby Hull were just going about their usual you know, puck shoot after practice. With one random shot, Mikita's stick broke and the blade curved. It curved in a particular way something Makita didn't think twice about in the initial moment. He simply skated angrily towards the bench to grab a spare. On his way to the bench, however, he came across a random puck that he frustratingly slapped at. Boom! The puck hit the board so fast, so hard, it made a sound that caught everyone's attention. Hmm. They had something here. Over the next few years, the Black Hawk duo would experiment with a variety of blades and curves to find what fit their style best. And while the two were already too amazing players in the game. The curved stick might very well have put them up and above the competition. At least I like to think so. Like, let's look at the stats. I'm looking at HockeyReference.com right now. And let's say that 1964 to 1966 was around the time where the invention of the stick had occurred, since I don't know the exact date. Maybe you do. If you do, please uh, show me the reference and uh, post it on the comments below. And I'm looking at Stan Makita's stats before and after those seasons. You look at a guy, yes, he scored 39 goals in 1963 and 89 points that year. But that became more consistent after the fact. I mean, after 1965, he scores 35 goals and 97 points in 1966-1967. And he goes on to score another 87, 40 goals and 87 points the year after that. And then, once again, reaches 30 goals and 97 points. Just a, a much more consistent level of play. Yes... Um, these guys are starting to reach the physical prime of their uh, of their careers, but you know at the same time I don't think the curve blade can go unnoticed. Now Bobby Hall is a little bit better. I mean if you're looking at uh, 1961, he does score 50 goals in 70 games, quite impressive. But once again, after the invention of the curved stick, which you can see right here, he starts to become more consistent on that level. For example, starting 1965, he scores 54 goals. Then 52 the year after. Yeah, okay, 44 the year after that, but then back to 58. 38, 44, 50, and then goes on to make a million dollars in the WHA. <laughs> Nevertheless, over the course of the next decade or so, more and more athletes would start to catch on to these advantages. And it didn't take long for a lot of them to actually jump on the bandwagon. Heck, coaches were even telling their players to jump on the bandwagon. Why not? Get their players to play better? just bending their stick so they started playing with it they even got manufacturers to do it pre-hand that my friends that's the history of the curved hockey blade or at least the story of the nhl history books like to go by we know how accurate that can be <clears throat> got original six well i'm not really sure these two were the actual inventors though and i'll get to that in a moment but they definitely were the pioneers the ones who popularized it because see according to the book the Stick by Bruce Delbigan. There were quite a few players who claimed that they were the first to invent the curve. You know, first. Andy Bathgate, for example, talks quite frequently about how his family in Winnipeg would do this to their blades between practices. It was a, quite a hobby. The method was simple. Soak them in water and bend them forcefully. Andy says he played with the curve stick throughout his entire junior career. But when it was time to sign with the New York Rangers, he found that his coach hated it. In fact, he would break his sticks on purpose, claiming they were against the rules it was pretty much a my way or highway type of approach. Kind of goes hand in hand with the claim I was making during the Big Six Canada video I made last week, where I discussed how Canadian coaches were known for being very strict, very traditional. Anyway, controversy comes here uh, now that Bathgate starts to accuse Makita of taking the idea from him. It was 
right before a game at Madison Square Garden where a Blackhawk staff member had asked Bathgate for a spare stick for Stan. He never got that stick back. And the rest was history. Stan obviously denies all of these claims, but it doesn't really matter. See, Bert Olmsted here claims that he was curving sticks well before these guys were even born in 1930. It says that he and other NHLers early in his career would actually do the same, putting slight curves onto the blades when coaches weren't looking, because obviously coaches were very strict. It was very untraditional, and it might have actually even been against the rules at first. Who actually invented the curve may never be found, but one thing is for sure. The use of a curved stick has long been used by hockey players well before Stan and Hull were ever born. And it comes down to this. Whatever works for you within the rules of the game, keep it up. Anyway, tell me what you guys think and feel free to add to the story. I'm always willing to learn more. As always, if you like the content, then please share with friends, family, and teammates. Every week I bring you guys a new topic and I'm always taking suggestions. Cheers.